Okay, could you repeat that, Barbara, for me, please? Please, please, please. My dear. If, if, if you don't plant uh, seeds, plant a, a tithe and do a, a, a good ministry like your ministry, I the kind of ministry, mm -hmm. you're not to reap anything. That's the true. People that don't plant can't expect to reap any kind of a harvest. They're going to be barren. There you they're go. They're not going to have a harvest. There you go. There you go. There you go. And let me add to that, if you keep planting in a ministry where they are using satanic means to try to do God's job, then there will be barrenness. Thank you, Barbara. You are awesome. I will tell Terry how much I care about you. I'm going to tell Sister T about you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Somebody else, please. I know from my experience, Reverend, I ended up living in a property that I didn't know um, wasn't of the Lord. That's why I became barren. Yeah. So my money was actually cursed and everything they had crossed my check and put void and some crazy other signs. And I didn't know until I prayed about it. What was that? The money was in the bank. We were called. Uh, I was called Ashley from the priest. They, they said there was no money, and Bobby and I went over to the bank, and there was the money there. And from then on, it's just been barren. That's why I was even told I was not allowed to um, pray to God or anything. But I still continue praying to God and to continue playing worship music and even the TV on and they start TV in. The, to the whole townhouse and no matter how much I tried to give more it just made it even harder and harder all I had time sometimes and sometimes I didn't even have time but I still would squeeze in to volunteer at church so it depends also where you live I think too um, and even though I went with another Christian person to check the place out and everything the place looked okay but there really wasn't you really need to have that discernment from the Lord where to live or for him to open the doors and one of my aunts said that um, doors were open but somebody came behind and closed them That's wow we have to watch that doors were open please somebody write that down for me doors were open and somebody else came behind and closed them so we should watch and make sure that when doors are open for us, that nobody come behind to close them. Interesting. That is interesting. That is interesting. Very interesting point. Next. I believe that's the thing is tearing people down with your words. There you go. Tearing people down with your words. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Geneva. Thank you, Maria. You guys are awesome. Who want to add something to it tonight? Mariam. Yes, Mariam. Yeah, I'm also thinking about people That's true. That is true. That is true. If the father and mother are poor, they pass poverty to their cheek, to their kids. Sickness could be passed. Demons could be passed. Whatever they possess, whether physically, mentally, emotion, emotionally, or demonic, it could be passed. Recently, they've discovered that mothers and fathers that show threats of anxiety they pass it on to their children. I just heard it this week. I heard it this week. Science, that's modern science, has discovered that if a parent has anxiety problem, schizophrenic problem, they could easily pass it on to their children. That's what modern science have discovered. Oh, Reverend, can I add to what she said? Mm -hmm. My grandma came from a rich family. Okay. And jealousy can also 
also be a bearing thing. Yes. That, um, um, my grandma lost her wealth because of that factor and other elements. And of course, whatever you do with your money, if you do good things and plan, like one of the sisters were saying, do the work of the Lord, things are go well. But if you have also family members that also use money for wicked things, your whole family can be cursed. Right. Um, my grandma always very good at giving to the church and helping helping other people. And she tried having a store, and people used to steal from her. And I used to tell her, Grandma, they're stealing from you. Right. She said, Don't worry, darling. She said, They need it more than me, so that's okay. And I we, I learned a lot of things from her. I didn't know that she was rich until my mother told me that she was rich. She never um, was indifferent with anybody. But later on, you know, she owned farm and animals and livestock. But in her town where she was, in a little small town, it was considered rich. But it wasn't to the level where she used to be. So I, I thought she was just like everybody else, you know. And my mom said, no, that wasn't her position. And she was even willing to give her last symbol that she was rich for the life of my cousin because he was dying. And after that, there was no symbol that she was even rich anymore. So, like she was saying, the curse, uh, from what I understand of my great-grandmother, she was not a very nice woman, and she would marry all her daughters with people that had money. And they had to be a certain color. They could not be dark-skinned, they could not be brown-skinned, they all had to be light complexed. That's the way she was. I never met the woman, but I hear little stories here and there that she was not a very good woman. But my grandma never resembled my great-grandmother. My grandma was very gentle. In fact, the mere fact that if she would know that any of you guys were praying for me, she would prepare a big meal and welcome you, you know, with what she had and be very happy that you were praying for me. Um, And she would be very appreciative of food. She said with food, Somebody telling you the richest man and woman in the world. That's all she had to really offer. And she would, you know, hug you and, you know, and enjoy your company because that was what she taught me. Enjoy people's company while you have it because money comes and goes. And that's, uh, that's the only memory I have now was the advice that she used to give me as a small child that I met her. That was supposed to be my punishment for meeting her because she had no electricity. She had nothing, but to me, I thought everything was new. You know, how do you, you know, propane, I thought was new. Um, the way she lived, I thought it was so new because we didn't have that until later on, until history came along and I said, oh, wow, she made it seem like it was all new to me. So um, my childhood with her was the best. So with her, let's always let's go to church and thank God for what we had. Okay. Okay, that's good. Is there somebody else that has something to to offer tonight to add why there is barrenness? Yeah, um, I think that, I don't think I know, that not consulting with God before you make a major decision. There you go. Um, is something that people don't look at, but I think it's very important and also disobedience. Who is speaking? Who is speaking? Rose. Rose, okay. That is true. That is true. Consulting with God before you make major decisions. Consulting with God. If you do not consult with God before you make major decisions, you'll go into barrenness. It's very quick. You'll go into barrenness very, very quick. That one is even quicker. There was this lady that wanted to marry this handsome man. Those who have eyes into both sides of the supernatural world, warn her, do not. Well, she won't listen. The sex was too good. The man was too handsome. The kiss was so spectacular, so warm. The hogs were feverish. She would not listen. Everybody pleaded with her that that guy is a con artist. She, was, she thought that they were all fighting her. Other women were jealous or envious of her. That's the reason. They wanted to take the young man. Even until the day that they were going in, 
marching into the altar for a huge church service. The chandelier, the chandelier that was in front of the altar fell down from the sky, from the roof for no reason. It fell down, almost fell on top of their head. They have to flee and the thing broke. And they have to wait for people to come and sweep them away. And still she went for the wedding. Still she went for the wedding. Marlene, are you on tonight with me? <laughs> the woman went on with the wedding. And two weeks after that, the marriage was done. It was over with. See, some people will say, oh, because I've invested so much into this man or into this woman, I have to carry on this wedding. Really? Why not walk away before the, 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 the heartache will be too much for you to bear? Walk away before you go to sign the paper. They will not listen. Secondly, people do that for pride. Pride and arrogance will not allow them to walk away. They stay there. It's the same thing I've seen a lot of people. An argument begins. Instead of walking away, when the argument began, they stay there to argue until somebody shot somebody. See, it's a pride thing. Many things we do, we do them out of pride. So I want you to think about that. If there is barrenness in your life, it's about time that you lift up your hand to heaven and say to God, Jesus, I have died for me. I recognize that there are areas of my life that there are barrenness. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the power of his resurrection. I want fatality to return back to me right now. I want the blessing. Because either you have the blessing or you have the curse and the curse comes with barrenness. Begin to pray tonight and say to God, in the name of Jesus, remove every barrenness from me. No matter what kind, begin to pray.
stretch forth my hand towards everyone in the world who are listening and who are watching in the name of the Son of God I break down every curse I break down every spirit of rebellion rebellion is at the heart of barrenness and curses unbelief fear sin ignorance pride arrogance lack of knowledge laziness lethargy unwillingness to sow seeds unforgiveness mother when we go about killing people for no reason when we deprive the poor of their rights and the strangers among us, the orphans, the widows, when we do not take care of people that God has instructed us to take care of, when we abandon taking care of things that God said we should take care of for the sake of the kingdom. Morendo so kayando, be second yam tea send on brote. Ya condom bruta santo, me condom briti sekiande, montom busaka, she tembe yendo, ma cotom posike yam dam barando siacote. Unforgiveness, vengeance. Is a big problem to my children, says the Lord. Selfishness is a big problem to my children, says the Lord. As soon as you return back from rebellion, I will release my glory upon you, says the Lord. Many of you allow people to use you they make you cheap. God is saying that I shall let you know you were created not to be cheap. God's power is moving over the atmosphere. People of God, I see a hand from heaven holding a round thing and that thing is light. Since we've been talking, I've been watching this hand holding a round thing, just as you see me do. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, you'll see how I do my hand. I saw a hand, a big hand, like this very solid hand. This hand is like a gold hand. And it is holding an egg-like something big one very big one and beautiful light is shining from it and i'm watching this dear jesus reveal to us the meaning of this symbol that we are seeing reveal to us holy spirit i am giving this light to everyone who are willing to turn away from darkness. Everyone who are willing to turn away from darkness shall receive this light. And with this light, they will never be fooled anymore. 
with this light, there will no longer be barrenness in your life. Receive light. Let this light expose every darkness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let this light shine out brightly out of my hand and let it go out to the nations of the earth. Let this light shine out of my hand and let it be taken by many from my hand to the nations of the earth. Let it destroy the curse and let the blessing be poured into the world. This is what God is sharing with us. Until the light appear, until darkness is destroyed, barrenness still remain. The desire of God is to cleanse us from sin and to remove rebellion and then light will appear and the blessing will follow. This is how it goes. Father, we thank you for revelation and now we call for power. Every one of you on the phone line on Muslim begin to ask God for power. Begin to ask God for power. Lord, I ask for your power to come upon me. Jesus, every barren life and every barren land that belongs to you guys, tonight I command them to be turned to a blessed place. Your job, your life, your dreams, your family, your money, your career, in Jesus' name I command the blessing to enter into everything you are doing. Barrenness in the name of Jesus be removed. Everybody, please begin to tell God, please, I do not want you just to be a God to me. I want you to be a Jehovah Jireh to me. That is the last prayer that we are praying tonight. Begin to tell God, be my Jehovah Jireh. Come on, let's pray. This is serious. Lord, be my Jehovah Jireh. Lord be my Jehovah Jireh. Lord be my Jehovah Jireh. Lord be my Jehovah Jireh. Jesus be my Jehovah Jireh. Holy Ghost be my Jehovah Jireh. Father be my Jehovah Jireh. Be my Jehovah Jireh. Be my Jehovah Jireh, my provider, my provider, my provider. You are my Jehovah Jireh. Become my Jehovah Jireh. Become my Jehovah Jireh. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. I want you to make this confession with your lips and believe it with your heart and right now as you will say it things will change 
I believe with all my heart. That what Jesus did for me on the cross by the power of his resurrection, by the riches of his glory, I confess with all my mouth, with all my heart, please. I confess with all my heart. And I say it with my lips. That from this day forward, that Jesus is my Jehovah Jireh. Jesus, you are my Jehovah Jireh. Father, you are my Jehovah Jireh. Holy Spirit, you are my Jehovah Jireh. You are my Jehovah Jireh. You are my Jehovah Jireh. Everything that I shall do will prosper from now on. Because you are my Jehovah Jireh. I allow you, O oh God, to provide for me the way you want it. Provide for me big things. I don't want no small life. I want a life full of good and big things. In Jesus' name. The Lord God is my Jehovah Jireh. The Lord God is my Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Dear Father, you have made a covenant with your people. In Christ Jesus, by his blood, there is a new covenant. Therefore, you cannot stop being Jehovah Jireh to us. You are now Jehovah Jireh. Lord, you made this covenant with us. We didn't make it. You planned things for us. We didn't plan it. Therefore, from this minute, we acknowledge you to be our Jehovah Jireh. Let the things we've been asking begin to happen quickly. Let big things begin to happen quickly. Let good things begin to happen quickly because you are our Jehovah Jireh. This is our portion. This is a covenant. Amen and amen and amen. And we seal this prayer by the power of the Holy Spirit with the blood of the Son of the living God. And God there is nothing that is going to stop you. No matter what it is, will never stop you from this day forward. Because we bring the blood into this prayer. We bring the blood of your son into this prayer. Nothing will stop you from being our Jehovah Jireh. From this day forward. Amen. I'll see you guys tomorrow by 9 p.m. Good night. Thank you very much. Okay. To stop conference recording, press 1. To return to the conference, your conference recording has stopped.